and welcome back once again to the Greg Strew Show, coming to you almost live and direct from Cable Television City here in the west side of Chicago. Greg Strew is glad to have you along, and uh, we have a lot to talk about tonight, just a lot, as we continue our series of just me in front of a black curtain. <laughs> I don't know, it just, it kind of looks cool, kind of looks elegant, kind of looks simple, and uh, that's just what we're doing right now. Uh, as you know, a lot of things have been happening in the news, as it is every single day. And uh, recently there was a, a shooting in, a mass shooting actually in Florida, that uh, of course has been playing out in the media every day on the newscasts and, uh, you know, and people pontificating, thinking and sharing their thoughts on gun control, mental illness, and all of those things. Tonight I want to talk a little bit about that from the mental health standpoint. And, of course, to, uh, you know, talk about the NRA. You know, the NRA has had a lot of uh, political clout, uh, especially with the conservative party, the Republican Party, or what's left of the Republican Party. And I also kind of say what's left of the Democratic Party. Democrats have always, at least today's Democrats, the um, liberal Democrats, I guess, are, are very much against... Uh, you know, guns in general. At least that seems to be a, a party, party line, of course. So it's always easy to blame somebody when someone kill, get, gets killed. And in this case, a 19-year-old uh, person, young man, walked into a school and, and began firing with a, a high-powered assault rifle. So I'm sure you've heard about all of this. Tonight, I really don't want to talk about the... The, you know, I don't want to talk about the, the politics per se, but I have a feeling we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Um, and I also want to talk about Larry Kudlow. Uh, this gentleman used to be on CNBC. I, I, I believe he's still a contributor, but he has a wonderful radio program that airs on the Big 89 here in uh, Chicago on WLS. I believe it's on from 2 to 6 on Saturdays. Don't quote me on that. I'm almost positive that's when I listen to him. But he's had a, a lot of things to, to talk about uh, that have resonated with me. Uh, Mr. Kudlow has been in politics. He started as a Democrat. Now I believe he is, well, I know he's a conservative. Uh, he's a journalist. He worked in government. And I think he has a lot of great things to say, a lot of wisdom as to what's going on in society today and what... Some of his beliefs are that, that kind of um, resonated with me and what we've been talking about on this program. You know, the lack of respect. Uh, you know, and he feels that there's a lack of God and spirituality in our society right now, and I, I, I have to agree with him. But again, you know, there's people out there that don't believe. And I think I have to be respectful to the fact that there's people that do not believe in Christ or God, and, and that's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not here to be someone's moral compass, but rather to talk about, you know, how things are changing, and, and um, I, I feel there's a lot of bullying going on, <clears throat> you know, that if I don't believe a certain way, that there's something wrong with me. If, if I happen to uh, agree with the president on something, that I'm a Republican, or I'm labeled as being conservative, when in fact I'm really not. Uh, I know that as I'm getting older, uh, as I'm maturing, that I'm becoming a little more conservative in some of my viewpoints, but I am not, you know, there's things that I don't agree with. And, and of course, on the Democrat side, there's things that I don't agree with. So I've been an independent. I've, I've oftentimes wondered how there hasn't been an independent party coming up, or that the uh, what is that other party? Hasn't gained uh, traction. I can't. A libertarian has not gained traction. So tonight, uh, today, I want to talk about as I'm making noise here uh, about Larry Kudlow um, and some of the things that he's talked about, as well as this shooting and the NRA and companies that are distancing themselves because that seems to be better for business. And I tend to wonder, with five million members how that's better for business. So Delta Airlines and a number of other companies have you know, discontinued discounts and et cetera. And to be honest with you, I think the safest flight to fly is probably somebody you know, that, that supports the NRA because <laughs> you know that somebody on that airline uh, knows how to use a gun in a situation if it, if it uh, you know, happens. Um, and you know, I just think it's one of those things we're never going to agree upon, <clears throat> and it's always easy to blame somebody else. So what happens when that happens? People's freedom 
personal freedoms get taken away. And I can understand why the NRA, National Rifle Association, has not uh, kowtowed to the request of, you know, for the government to step in and start putting some mandates in place. And I understand why, because you know what I compared it to was when Johnny Carson was on NBC and NBC told him, you know, we're going to play football on Mondays. And Johnny said, well, you're going to play football all the time because I'm not going to be doing my show. Because it's easy for you to, you know, if you delay it by two hours this week, what's it going to be delayed next week? Or if you delay it by five minutes, what's going to happen? So I, I really understand that side of a negotiation. They're not negotiating because they know that if they give one thing up, that something else is going to have to be expected. To take guns completely away from people or taking rights away. And we'll talk about that. Anyway, I'm Greg. I thank you for joining us. Uh, we are here on Community Television, reinventing it from the west side of Chicago. And we'll be back in just a moment. Thanks for joining us, everybody. My first day with them was in a motel room, you know, getting, acqu getting acquainted. <laughs> getting acquainted with them. He went, we got acquainted. It wasn't Motel 6, was it? <laughs> it's a red roof. Thank you and welcome back. I'm Greg Struess and this is The Greg Struess Show. We are seen on YouTube.com and uh, also on Xfinity Comcast in 65 communities covering Elmhurst and the west side of Chicago. And uh, you can always get in touch with me at gstruessman at gmail.com. And I certainly hope that you'll drop me a line and, and comment. Now, before the break, we were talking, I was talking about Larry Kudlow. I'm going to get to him in just a second. But I want to honor my dear friend of many years, who I have not seen in many years, but we've been in touch here and there, Dan DeBoard. Uh, Dan and I met in high school, and he worked on uh, various shows that we did in high school. We did a show for three years, and he, like me, was nominated for, uh, I think we're both in the Hall of Fame, Speech Hall of Fame, very proud of that accomplishment. And Dan ended up going to Columbia College before I did. And uh, he ended up going on to some other things, got out of the pursuing broadcasting and, and got into security, did a great job with uh, <clears throat> many of the big uh, hotels. He was a chief security. And I, I believe he's now working in radio in Mokina at 89.1. I'm trying to think of the call letters, so forgive me. But I want to congratulate Dan on uh, getting back into it. And, and really thanking him for kind of lighting the fire under my rear end and realizing that, you know what, I can do that too. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, I just, um, you know, I'm doing it, but I, I want to do it. I want to do it for real. So now that I put it out there, we'll see what, what, what goes on. But uh, it's just like shaking hands and getting out there again. And I think sometimes it's like, relationships, like if we've been out of a relationship for a while, I, I just tend to wonder, and I have, I've been out of a relationship for a long time, and I just tend to wonder, like, oh my gosh, in the years that I've been single, like, could I adapt to, you know, being with somebody again, you know, that it's not all about me, and uh, just, you know, the fear of that, I guess, <clears throat> and that's also what's kind of permeated me with, with shows, you know, I, I've done shows for a long time, and, you know, uh, well, I was well on my way to doing bigger things, and other things happened. And, and uh, that's what's going to lead me into uh, Larry Kudlow. So Mr. Kudlow's been on CNBC. I thought he's still on the cable network, and I believe he's, maybe he's just like a special contributor. So forgive me if I do not know that. Um, but he's, uh, he's a very wise man, and I, I like business. I, I like business, I like business radio, I like talk radio. So he's more of a conservative, economic, economist, 
and commentator, and more on the conservative side. But what he talked about this uh, recently on his radio program was how you know he quit drinking and got into the got into AA and and he shared that and I, I think that's terrific because you know what I did the same thing for a while I I left the program because I felt that it was time to do something else and some people stay and and if that works for them great I just decided that you know what I want to get back into doing. Uh, something that adds value and meaning to my life, which I think is very important as we go through change. As, as Mr. Cudlow was talking, he said that the problem in society as he sees it today is that we're at war with each, we're at war with ourselves. And I thought to myself, I'm like, oh my goodness, he is speaking, you know, he's talking the talk right here. He is talking to somebody that understands it. And that what's going on right now with all the blaming blaming other people for, for problems in our own lives or problems in society or looking to blame instead of coming up with a solution it is also related, you know, to not having uh, respect. You know, we're not having respect for law and order. We're not having respect for systems. We're not having respect for each other. And he also relates this to a lack of God or spirituality in our lives. Now, in 12-step work, as we talk about 12 steps, 12 traditions, Alcoholics Anonymous started it. And then, you know, you Cocaine Anonymous and the offspring of Sex Anonymous. And uh, I think it's called sex, Sexaholics Anonymous. You know, a holic, an active holic is somebody that's, you know, active in their addiction or you know, the belief is that once an alcoholic or once a, what's an addict, always an addict. And it, what that means is that once someone overcomes that, and they can overcome it, it just means that the only cure or the belief for the only cure is that it's never to pick it up again. Because if I pick up again, then I start it all over again. So I understand it. Um, I respect that, that people have differing points of views. I don't agree that AA is forever. That's just me. Some people will say, well, you know, you're full of it. You'll, you'll drink again. You'll do whatever again. I just believe in my heart that when I'm done with something, I'm done with it. And if I've learned a valuable lesson, then it's ultimately up to me to make the difference in my life and pass it on to other people. But passing it on is an is a act of giving. However, if someone's not asking for it to be passed on, or I'm not ready to pass it on, then I might not be ready to make those certain steps. Now, one that kind of comes into mind, there's a thing called fear of financial insecurity. And I think a lot of folks today fear their finances. Now, I don't think Mr. Cudlow has that problem with finances, uh, but the fear of financial insecurity is also rooted in addiction. Why? Because it's like, well, how am I going to, you know, how am I going to pay my bills if, if a job doesn't pay that much or my skill set isn't that much or I've been out of work for a while? And, and that starts to get to be very uh, troublesome. Now, do you think the fear of financial insecurity plays into a, a gambling addiction? Absolutely. I would say that's the one that stands out the most. However, in alcoholism, it's the same thing. People lose their jobs. Now, there's high-functioning alcoholics who probably, you know, they go their 12, 15-hour days at work and go home and, you know, drink all night and manage to wake up the next day and do it. And uh, I'm glad that people are able to do it <laughs> and be successful. But more oftentimes than not, it doesn't work out that way. So I thought that what Mr. Cudlow talked about on his radio program hit home because, you know, when did it become a problem having God in our lives? And now I'm not talking from a religious standpoint. I'm talking from a point that believing in something that is greater than myself, which is also lingo from 12 step, you know, believing in that higher power because now it's politically incorrect to have a belief in God. You know, you, people go on television and they talk about God or Christ and, and it's like immediately, oh, you believe in that? Like, when did it become okay to criticize someone for believing in God? Or criticize someone for, you know, it used to be the other way around. If somebody didn't believe in God, there was something wrong with them. And I have a friend who says, I am an atheist. And, and what's funny is she ended up going to a Christian school, you know? She went to a Christian school, and in her adult life, she decided that 
And, and I don't know. I mean, somebody asked me last night, what do atheists believe in? Atheists have to believe in something. And I don't know. I don't know what atheists believe in. But I'm not going to be ashamed to say that I believe in God. I'm not going to be ashamed to say that I believe in something that's greater than myself. I'm not going to tell you, you need to believe. Because you know what? If you don't believe, there's something wrong with you. It's like if you voted for President Trump, there's something wrong with you. If you didn't vote for Hillary, there's something wrong with you. Like, where did it become okay to judge based on our own personal beliefs? So is that not a form of bullying? That's what I kind of wonder. Because there's a lot of bullying going on. You know, you watch some of the news, and it's just as like the man can't do anything right. And then you watch other news, he's doing, you know, great things. Now, Mr. Cudlow likes the president, and he has known the president for many years. But I, I, you know, regardless of politics, I think he brings up a great point. Where, what has happened to our society now that we're at war with ourselves? And I think a part of that is really the disease in society is mediocrity. Now, I, I remember my friend Greg McNeil used to work on, on uh, the old show in Michigan. And uh, we, uh, you know, he's, he's in, um, I believe he's in Ireland right now. But Greg and I would have great conversations about things. And, uh, you know, uh, and I forget what my point was with, with talking about Greg. <laughs> I just lost my, my point with talking about Greg. But, you know, we, we would do shows. And, uh, and everybody loved each other. We, we may have had different beliefs. But it wasn't all about those beliefs. It was all about us as people. And I think we've lost that. I think we look at people a certain way based on how they're dressed or how they act. And we have people that come out here, you know, to Cable Television City who act a certain way. And, you know, you just got to realize that people are where they're at. So what I've had to learn in my life is uh, oh, this little expectation. Now, I, one thing that I didn't buy in AA and some 12-step is that you can't have expectations of people. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for failure. Well, I've been proven wrong on that. I, it is kind of, I, I, think you, I think it's okay to have a certain expectation of somebody if you're employing them, if they're a friend of yours. I think there's an expectation that there's going to be reciprocation, a, a, you know, a give and take kind of thing. And more often than not today, it's all about who? It's all about me. And I don't like that anymore. So what I found is that I kind of become isolated because I'm tired of dealing with it. And that's not who I am. I am not an isolationist. And I don't, I don't like it. So is it because God's not in my life? Is it because I don't have a spiritual connection? Is it because I'm not in my career? Is it, you know, what are these things? Is it personal things that have happened in my life that I haven't been able to get over? You know, I'm human. I'm a human being. I'm not perfect. And I guess I've always been held to a different standard than other people, which, which really isn't fair either, but I, I don't know. I just, I don't know, it's been different things for me. I'm not playing the victim. I think it's made me a better person. And, uh, but I, I just, I care too much about stupid stuff. There's a book that's out now. I, I don't know who the author is, but it's like The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. I would love to talk to that guy, and you guys can figure out what the F is. Not Giving an F. And the subtle art of it, because you know what? You can't care about every single thing, and especially if you're working for people that don't care about people, how can you care? And then what happens? It's like, I don't want to work in a situation like that. I don't want to work in a situation where, where it's like anything I say is like ugh, dismissed or, or that I can't add to something and I'm not respected. And again, it's, it's a younger generation that's kind of coming in and doing this. And of course, I blame the people that are my age that now have kids in their 20s because we always we're told no. You know, you want to go to McDonald's, there were limitations. And now I just, I, I don't relate to any of it. And you know what? I'm not going to be ashamed of it. Like my sister calls me, you know, calls me Venus after, after you know, Grandma Struess because she could sniff out people. And I think she sniffed my sister out. <laughs> you're just like, you're just like Venus. And, uh, you know, I don't really think that that was a compliment. But being at war with ourselves, I want you to think a little bit about that during the break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the NRA and a little bit about give and take and why there's no giving and no taking. <laughs> I'm Greg. This is The Greg Show, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thanks for joining us, everybody.
Hi folks, and welcome to the Greg Strew Show. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce some high-profile guests that we have here in the audience tonight. Uh, first of all, from we have from the Vice President of Swell Pictures, Dave Mueller. Let's hear it for Dave. He's out in the audience. I know, I know. Denise Graham from the Hammond Times, she's with us. I know, I know, it's just a setup. Uh, let's hear it for Mick Jagger. He's here. Let's hear it for Mick Jagger. <laughs> Welcome to the show, folks. All right. Here's the deal with the NRA. I believe that if people can sit down and come up with the solution. You know, what is permissible? Now here's the deal, I was making a point about an 18 year old with a high powered rifle. All right, the other argument is that 18 year old is also, also can go into the military. And if they're okay to go into the military and use a high powered rifle, why can't they have a high, power, high powered rifle for themselves? That's the question. So how do we come up with a solution? I believe it's sitting down, multiple parties, and coming up with ways that help both sides. That the people that are pro-gun and want to keep their guns, they keep their guns. But how do we get these safe things in place? And I believe it's <sighs> having systems in place, okay? Uh, schools, more security at the entrance, you know, checking book bags a little bit more, having more communication with classrooms, and, and having people become more involved in the communication process, you know, inviting open communication. Now, how do I do that? It's how I present myself. So many schools and many police departments have a community resource officer. That police officer, sworn personnel, carries a gun whole nine yards. When, when they're not at the school, they may be on the street writing tickets, you know, responding to calls, but more often times than not, they're assigned to that school. <clears throat> By having open dialogue and establishing relationships with the students, the administrators, and having an open way of communicating, I believe that many of these things will not take place because people are going to feel more responsible and more obligated to report. All right, so if somebody isn't acting right, getting ahead of it, and also having that public relations uh, plan in place, getting the message out to the community, whether it's through community media, whether it's through sending things home, public announcements, being thing, you know, getting more, again, proactive in the communication process. So by having open communication, what is that? There's trust involved. That somebody, a young man, a young woman, walks into the community, you know, community resource office at the school, talks to the police, or talks with the administrator, the, the superintendent or the, the principal, who also communicates to the staff and faculty that everybody needs to be involved in this, that this is a team effort. I believe that's the first part of it, and, and that, that's what's going to prohibit this from happening. Because by having open communication and dialogue, what is it? It's a give and take of ideas, and again, working on that solution. So I don't believe this is something that's not going to happen again. It's going to happen again because somebody's going to have to make a name for themselves doing something like that. And uh, but getting ahead of it and feeling, you know, it's just like crime happening in our neighborhoods. We need to call the police. We need to be active with our neighbors and say, "Look, are you okay?" Because the community that stays together is the community that lives. The community that lives together is the community that stays together. And if you're not putting up with riffraff, they get the message really quick. And I think that's the way that this can work. Now from the NRA standpoint, getting open dialogue and saying, look, come on guys, what does a kid have to do? Why does somebody have to have like a big magazine? And I'm not talking about time life either. What are some of the things that we can do to, to lessen casualties and not blame, you know, 
get away from blaming and again more into open communication. I think that's what the solution is and coming up with it. Now I will discuss the recipe as I, as I come up with it a little bit more, but I think it's all about communication. Self-responsibility, self-accountability, and looking out for who? Not just myself, for somebody else. And if someone's troubled and I'm an adult, it's up to me to help that person, I think, and get them into the right system. So it's not about lawsuits, not about anything else, because you know what? In the end, that's all blood money anyway. And uh, anyway, I hope I made some good points here. Uh, I am not an expert by any means. I try to talk common sense uh, and, and try, to, try to look at things, you know, from both, from multiple angles, I guess. Anyway, uh, again, I'm Greg Struess. This is The Greg Struess Show. You can reach me at gstruessman at gmail.com. And, of course, you can watch us on youtube.com with the search words, The Greg Struess Show. And every Wednesday, Xfinity Comcast, Channel 19, in the west suburbs of Chicago. Greg Struess, thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time. Thank you so much. Goodbye. else I have to do other than stand here no. and look like a, right. an idiot. So you, say, you think I have good looking legs, oh, that's what terrific. you're saying? Yes, well, thank terrific. you for the support. Um, we always start at the bottom of the body, okay? Because what we don't want to do is to totally cut off all of your circulation. We want to work up towards the heart, okay? Oh, doesn't this feel wonderful? Oh, I, I have been waiting to get you with an ice cold wet wrap. Okay. okay. <laughs> Two layers would normally layers. go on. Tonight we will just do one. Just to, Have you ever had a sprained leg that you've had to be mm -hmm. up like yeah, this, Joe? Yeah, exactly. Same type of thing. The only difference is you work. Danger, you danger, work. danger. Okay. Now, well, see, now you just got lucky because with well, the ladies. Well, if you keep going that way, you're going to get lucky. Let's see here. Okay. Now, let's with see here. the ladies, we're only going to do one leg into the top portion. With the ladies, we would normally go through the crotch, come up and do what we call a butt lift. But since men don't really have butts, we won't worry about yours. Now, when I do upper torso. Now, can you, can you generally do this with clothes on or? No, 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 no. You definitely, at this point, you definitely would have to be down to, well, we tell everybody they're undergarments. Undergar